Hello, this is exercise 15D. We're looking again at integrals, and um, in the end of the last exercise, exercise 15C, I suggested that we wanted to get to some kind of um, understanding of what integration represents. You know, I'd, I'd said that gradient is what we're trying to find, really. Gradient of a curve at a particular point. When we, Whenever we differentiate, yeah, there was a clear understanding in my mind that to differentiate means find the gradient but at the moment we haven't got an understanding of what integration is other than it undoes um, an integration that may have happened already but we've already seen that it's got its own symbol as well this integration sign what's new on this picture is you've got two what's called limits of integration and when you have limits of integration you two things happen first of all we call it a definite integral um, and the other versions, by the way, when you don't have them, are called indefinite integrals. But when you have these definite integrals with these limits of integration, you end up with a value. You end up with a number for an integration rather than just like an algebraic expression. Um, so that's interesting in its own right that you end up with a number as an answer. So let's have a look at some questions. This is a starter. Um, I've got a dy by dx. What does it ask me to do? Well, it asked me to find y. This is integration. This is a typical question. So um, I've got that, so I can straight away write y equals add a power divided by the power. That's the rule. So x cubed over x cubed over 3 plus 2x. Don't forget your plus c. Um, to get my plus c, of course, I need to use this piece of information. It says y equals 6 whenever x is 3. So I've got to do 3 cubed over 3 plus 2 lots of 3 plus c. What's that give me? 6 equals 3 cubed is 27 divided by 3 is 9. Plus 6 plus c. That's 15. If I move it on the other side, I get c equals minus 9. You can see that quite easy when you think they cancel out and that moves over. So anyway, I've got c is minus 9, so therefore my equation for part 1, I suppose, y equals x cubed over 3 plus 2x minus 9. There you go, done. Uh, part 2, find the value of y when x equals 1. Alright, it's just a substitute job, isn't it? So part 2 is y equals, it says x is 1, so it's 1 cubed. 1 cubed is 1. Plus 2 1s, well that's 2. Nice and straightforward, isn't it? So again, you might as well just do these in your calculator. Type in the third, add on 2 to it, to take away 9. And I've got minus 20 over 3. Now, that's as good as any other answer. You could write minus 6.67 if you want, I suppose. Minus 20 over 3 is what I did, though. So anyway, the definite integration then is going to result in a value. Note this, this. I know this is going to be a definite integral because it's got some numbers. It's got two numbers. These are called the limits of integration. So then, rather than spending weeks and weeks showing you how to do this theoretically, I'm just going to do the sum and just copy down what I'm doing and get a feel for what it is we have to do on these questions. First of all, it's an integration, so I add the power divided by the power. Exactly the same as before. So ignore the 1 and the minus 2 initially. It goes 3x cubed over 3 plus 2x. Now here's the weird thing. On these ones, because this is then going to end up with a number, we're not going to get a plus c. Instead of that, we put these big square brackets. Make sure they're square. It shows that you know what you're doing. And just write 1 and minus 2 at the end, like that. These are still called the limits of integration. And what you do is you substitute the first one into your expression. And then you substitute the second one into your expression. And then you take one result away from the other. Well, first of all, I can just simplify that a bit. I just notice that this is really a bit easier. This is x cubed plus 2x between 1 and minus 2. So let's do what I said. Substitute the 1 in. That gives me, and I always put this in a bracket. So 1 cubed is 1. I'll actually write it out. Plus 2 times the 1. And having substituted the 1 in, write take away, and then substitute the minus 2 in. So it's minus 2. Put that in the bracket, because otherwise you go wrong. Cubed. Plus 2 lots of minus 2. Close bracket again. What's the first one give you? Well, it's 1 plus 2 is 3. Minus... And this is where brackets are useful, actually, because it saves you making dark mistakes. Um, this is minus 8. Um, and I think minus another 4. 
there. So it's negative 8 minus that 4, obviously minus 12 answer. And critically, it's got a minus in between this. 3 minus and minus 12 is actually 15. There's my answer. 15 is the right answer. Now notice something on my picture here. My picture has a drawn for you the curve. I know it's, you can't only half see it because I've drawn on, on top of it. But that's my curve, 3x squared plus 2. And um, here's the weird thing. I've said between 1, now there is 1 on my graph, that's 1. And there is minus 2. And what the calculator, the, the um, I think I did this in a package called Autograph, what it's done is it's coloured in the section underneath my graph. This is the x-axis here. You can't see it. This is the y-axis here. So it's coloured in the area underneath. And again, weirdly, it said area is 15. And interestingly, my answer was 15. So on all levels here, it's starting to get a feel for what integration is meant to imply. Here's another question. Oh, no, it's not. This is the rule. Um, when we're um, evaluating a definite integral, you integrate as normal. But don't put plus c. So this is the time you don't. Instead, you draw square brackets and add the limits. You then substitute those limits into your integral and then subtract them one from the other to get your final answer. This is the process. I suggest you write these four steps down. This is what we're going to do on all questions where there's a definite integral. So here's my example. Remember, we're going to integrate as normal. So integrate, ignore the 1 and minus 1, but it tells me that this is a definite integral, that this is why I know it's a definite integral. And remember, when it's definite integral, don't write plus c. So, x cubed over 3 minus 7x squared over 2 plus 12x. Don't write plus c, but instead put square brackets and write the limits of the integration there and there. Can I simplify it at all? No, I don't think I can. So substitute 1 in. Um, I said curly bracket at this stage. So put 1 in, I get a third. Because obviously 1 cubed is 1. So again, 1 squared is 1. So 7 lots of 1 is 7 over 2. And 12 ones are 12. There you go. I've put that in. Minus a second bracket. Now, always trickier with minuses. You might want to do this in your calculator. I know if I cube minus 1, I get minus 1. So it's minus 1 over 3. But I know if I square minus 1, it's plus 1. But unfortunately, it's minus 7 times that plus 1. So I think it's minus 7 over 2. And lastly, it's 12 times minus 1, which is minus 12. That's my um, brackets then. So now I might as well cheat on those, because I don't want to make dark mistakes. I might have already made dark mistakes, who knows. Third minus 7 over 2 plus 12. I typed it in wrong. Minus 7 over 2 plus 12. I get 53 over 6. Minus, again, I did suggest we want to put these in brackets just to make sure we don't make dark mistakes. So here it is. Minus a third, minus 7 and a half, minus 12. That's minus 95 over 6. Not very nice, this. But of course, your calculator takes care of everything, doesn't it? 53 over 6 minus, minus 95 over 6. And I get 74 over 3. I have no idea if that's right or wrong. 74 over 3. It says it's 24.66666. Um, 24. Yeah, 24.7, 74 over 3. Again, notice what the picture looks like. The picture tells a story. x squared minus 7x plus 12, that's what I've drawn on the graph of. I've drawn the graph of y equals x squared minus 7x plus 12. And I wanted a definite integral with the limits 1 and minus 1. And notice what it's done. It's coloured in between 1 and minus 1 on the x-axis. So it's gone to the x-axis. And it's coloured these values in. Obviously, this is the y-axis going up. And it colours it in, shades in underneath the curve and down to the x-axis. This is, we sometimes describe as this as the area under the curve. And we're not really doing the area under the curve bit at the moment, but just, it's just interesting. 
this was me trying to, to make sure I'd done the sum right, I suppose, when I first did it. 24.7, that's 74 over 3, all fits together. But this, I just find it interesting that they draw this area for us. They colour in this area, and that's because that's starting to get a feel for what this represents. Now, I've got two questions. Um, you're welcome to um, pause the video and see if you can get these right. I will then start the video up again. So. I'm going to quickly do it here. Um, integrate it gives me 3x cubed over 3 plus 4x squared over 2 minus x. That's between 1 and 2. So that means oh, 3 over 3 disappears and 4 over 2 simplifies to 2. So I've got x cubed and I'm going to substitute 2 into that. Gives me 2 cubed is 8. 2x squared. Um, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, minus 2. So that's my first bracket done. My second bracket is I put 1 in. That's 1 cubed, that's 1. Plus, does that say a plus? Oh, it does. So that should be a 8 plus 8 there. Um, 2x squared then um, is going to be 2 times 1 squared is 2. And it says minus the 1 there. 8 plus 8 is 16, minus 2 is 14. Minus 1 plus 2 is 3, minus 1 is 2. That's quite easy, isn't it? 12. So I'm hoping the answer is 12. 12 it is. Here's my picture. Notice I've integrated in my question between 1 and 2. And the calculator, the computer, when, it, when I drew this graph in and told it to integrate, drew the area underneath the curve up to the x-axis. It's a common theme that we're seeing now colouring under the curve between 1 and 2 and the area is the same as your answer. Second one here so add a power so that's 6x cubed divided by 3 or actually I can just simplify this straight off that's 2x cubed when I do that minus 2x squared over 2 I reckon it's minus x squared when I simplify minus 3x so you can just cut a few corners and do that if you want or you can take your time and do it properly. I don't mind I put 2 in Okay, that's 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16. Put 2 in is minus 4. Put 2 in is minus 6. So there's my first bracket. Take away my second bracket. Minus 2 is minus 8 times 2 is minus 16. Uh, minus 2 in here gives me 4, which is minus 4, because it says minus x squared. And then minus times a minus is a plus. 3 2 is a 6. So what is that? That sounds like 6 for the first bracket. Second bracket, bracket is minus 20, minus 14, I think. But of course, minus and minus, I add them together. So I think my answer is 20. 20, good. Oh, here's a weird thing. Look, I'll tell you why this is weird. I've got three sections here. And on two of the sections, it's found the area under the curve. Because it goes down to the x-axis. This is the x-axis going across. But this little section here, hey, look at that. Had to colour in above the x-axis. Um, didn't matter. Well, all I wanted was the area. Later on, I'll show you why perhaps that matters more than you think. Um, but for now, the area for there to there is 20. Even though that's possibly not quite true in this case. But I'll come back to that later. There's no fuss about worrying about it now. Um, a backward question. I'm not going to get a chance necessarily to do this. But what's the value of a? It says... I have to integrate this. All right, let's integrate it then. That's 2x squared over 2 minus 3x. And they disappear, and you end up with x squared minus 3x. And it says between a and 1. And it tells me the answer is 6. Okay, substitute these in. So if I substitute the a in, I get a squared minus 3a. If I substitute the other one in, I get 1 squared 1 minus 3 is equal 6. This gives me a quadratic equation, a squared minus 3a. This gives me um, minus 2 plus 2, move that over, I reckon minus 4 equals 0. So now I've got a um, minus 4, a plus 1, that gives me a equals 4, or a equals minus 1. It actually says it has to be positive. So that's my answer, a equals 4. Yes it is. Um, I'll talk about infinity during the lesson. It's definitely something I want to talk about. Um, 
and after that we're going to do exercise 15d. But we'll definitely look at the infinity question.